Hey, welcome to the top 10 best beers of 2018. According to me, Chad, of Chad's Beer Review. Sorry, the mic's in the way. Yeah, you thought you got rid of me. Yes, I did retire back in October when I reviewed that beer for episode number 1000 on my 10th anniversary. Um, but, you know, I, I love to make a good top 10 best year, top, top 10 best beer of the year list. Um, so I thought, why not? In fact, we actually have a few more videos coming after this. Not reviews, just other stuff, but you'll see that in the next coming weeks or so. Anyways, um, so if this is your first time, and I say this every year, it's not the top 10 best beers that were released this year. Um, in fact, a lot of the beers on this list have been around for literally years, if not decades or centuries. Um, it's the top 10 best beers that I reviewed for the first time in 2018. So re-reviews don't count, which is kind of a shame because I re-reviewed -re a lot of great beer this year, just not eligible for this um, list. Eight of the 10 I did video reviews of, and uh, two of them I only did text reviews of, so I'll just you know read briefly from the text review and put a picture of the beer right there. So, all right, so with no further ado, let's start the countdown. It's really interesting. It's like brand new and familiar at the same time because, I mean, the first thing I noticed was, you know, okay, I'm getting the classic, the sourness and the bread that you would get in any of the three previous reviews we just did, um, but not to the just balls out extent of that. It's much more um, refined, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. So I'm getting like the the bread, the barnyard, all that stuff. I'm getting this fruity kind of character like i said a uh, white grape green green pear you know palm fruit i guess as they call it you know just like a general kind of weedy malty base but because you know the the yeast and the wild bacteria ate up pretty much all the sugars i mean there's like a tiny little bit of a sweetness there although that might be like from the the fruity kind of flavors i'm getting from the the, the microbes and all that stuff um, i mean it's not to me it is not like super bone dry i feel like i've had beers um that have been drier than this this one technically should be the driest one i've ever drank so yeah really really interesting beer a pretty tasty beer is it the absolute most delicious beer i've ever had in my life no but i am betting it's quite uh well confined uh conforming to the specs mm, wow wow that is really really fruity Oh man, that was really delicious. It's kind of like a sangria wine. Getting like what did they say, like you know, plum, orange, cherry, currant, like all of that. To me, it's it's very very fruity, um, and the you know the the sourness on it is is now that I'm tasting it, it's actually quite low. It's, it's quite tame. I'd say it's like moderate, maybe even moderately low sourness. So and it's like that clean lactic acidity. Yeah, so it's interesting because you've got a lot of things going on here. You get the fruit. You got the acidity, you got the bread, um, you got the malt, which I haven't mentioned yet. There actually is kind of like what I was saying with the nose, like almost like, I don't know if I'd say it goes as far as say like a rich bready quality, but there certainly is like a plenty malty quality with a slight little bit of a toasty character there. And I do taste, they mentioned in the aroma, I did taste um, just a tiny little bit of like a vanilla this, or this chocolate. This is really delicious. And uh, yeah, look. Nice lacing on the glass, so I'm glad I give it a three out of three on appearance. <laughs> this beer definitely lives up to the the way it's marketed as a beer mead wine hybrid because I'm getting a little bit of each. I'm getting a rich kind of bready malt. Um, kind of reminds me of like a Maybach or like a really pale Doppelbach. And I'm also getting like a lot of honey in there. There's no hops, but the saffron is this lovely herbal kind of thing. And I can taste it. I can taste it right away. Like as soon as it hit my tongue. You got the bready malt. You got a lot of honey in here. You got the, the saffron as like this kind of garnish, um, just kind of offering like a, a contrast to the sweetness between the honey and those grapes are in there. So it is giving like a bit of a juicy kind of a flavor. Yeah. So, you know, bready malt, honey, sweet flavor. The subtle saffron herbal spiciness to give a little bit of a counterbalance. Um, very smooth. Um, yeah, so interesting, interesting beer. Mm, wow. Yeah, I mean, it tastes just like it smells. To me, it's just 
big, huge, fruity, fruity, uh, sweet kind of thing. I don't think I could go as far as to say a bomb because it's really well balanced and, and complex. So, I mean, it's just tasting exactly like it's smelling, like just getting those, the plum, rais raisins, figs, you know, those kind of things. Cherry, like something a like that. A little bit of black li licorice on here. I'm getting a lot of uh, citrusy hop flavor. And uh, the bitterness is, it's enough for a balance, but it's not like, you know, it's not like exactly like a black Just IPA. Dark, dark malt, but without any, no astringency whatsoever, no burnt character. I wouldn't even really go as far as say it tastes like coffee because it's so uh, sweet and fruity. I gotta say, this is not tasting like what I thought it was gonna taste like. I thought it'd be a little bit more towards, you know, like the roasty coffee kind of Imperial style, which is, like I said, like that's how I usually prefer my Imperial stouts. But uh, like the, these these fruity fruity bomb ones are pretty nice too. Mm, wow, wow, that's delicious. I can't believe I've never had this beer before until now. Um, so it's tasting exactly like it's smelling, just like immediately, like right away, like huge fruit, like like fruit punch or sangria, plum, cherry. Raisin, um, almost kind of like you know, like those those flavors you tend to get like in a Belgian dark strong, um, and at the same time like that just that luscious, they use that word a lot in, in the specs, luscious, maltiness, just caramel, toffee, you know the very confectionery, kind of syrupy flavors. You get a little bit of butterscotch, could be diacetyl. If it is, it's um it's not out of place for the style, and it, it just combines with the natural, the big maltiness of the base brew there. But um, so it does have that old character to it. This probably could be mistaken for a barley wine, but um, it has that, that old ale, je ne sais quoi factor to it. So yeah, I think it's really delicious. Um, all right, number five, Half Acre Gone Away IPA. Um, you know, I am not the huge hop head that I used to be, but I, I mean, I still drink IPA plenty, you know, plenty right, enough. So let's talk about it real briefly. Uh, aroma, potent, fruity, hop drive aromatics with notes of berry and stone fruits, a background presence of pine and resin, noticeable honey maltiness, no alcohol presence. Flavor, plenty of hop presence throughout, immediate sensation of summer fruit flavors. The taste is much more dry than juicy. At the same time, there's a somewhat sticky, resiny, piney taste. Bitterness is moderately high. Malt presence is quite strong with a light sweet honey-like graininess finishes with a subtle grassy spicy sensation along with clean alcohol but both of which linger in the aftertaste uh mouthfeel medium body moderate carbonation texture is quite smooth leading to rather easy drinkability definitely drinks like the seven percent abv brew that it is plenty of heft without being overbearing overall impression great selection of hops with a lovely malt base that combines for a delectable taste well-balanced palate and nice drinkability 10 out of 10 i think this scored a total score of 47 out of 50 that's really really good um, and number four, another beer I did not do a, a video review of, which I had in retrospect. Another Founders beer, Founders Sumatra Mountain Brown. I reviewed quite a few Founders beers this year, but even though I had multiple barrel age brews, I like this one the best. It's surprising that a brown ale would make my top 10 list, but then again, this is a coffee infused imperial brown ale. Um, aroma, huge coffee aroma, dark roasted, completely authentic, sweet brown malt base with slight chocolate character, no hops, none needed, no alcohol, clean fermentation, flavor, fairly rich brown malt sweetness up front, malts have a natural confectionery taste, caramel, milk, chocolate, etc. Coffee provides an underlying bitterness due to the roast. Flavor emerges after the apex and is quite delectable and akin to gourmet iced coffee. Palette is well balanced between malty sweetness and coffee bitterness. No cream or sugar needed. Hops have a light earthy flavor. Alcohol imparts a gentle warmth and a subtle vanilla flavor. Aftertaste is malty but not cloying. Mouthfeel, medium but full body, medium carbonation, smooth texture, remarkably drinkable at 9% ABV. Overall impression, a coffee bomb for sure, but a delicious, well-balanced, and two-spec coffee bomb, I might say. I think it gave out a 46 or 47. It was pretty good. Um, moving on. Mmm, wow. Wow. Lots of things going on with this one. So like as soon as it hit my tongue, just like intense sour cherry but it was really brief like it was like a cherry lambic or something but then just huge huge like brett like just brett started taking over 
So like the you have the Brett there and you have the woody quality. So like the Brett and the wood are playing off each other, but like with that that just that, you know, natural terroir character that, that you get with Brett. So it's like the you know, the farmhouse, horse blank, whatever you want to call. Actually as it finishes, you get the kind of wood, the vanilla. So like you're getting the vanilla from the wood and it kinda of has like a little bit of like a chocolatey kind of flavor. And then the, the cherry emerges again and it's like um tart cherry so i mean it's like very brief sour cherry up front wood oak in the middle and then really brief um tart cherry on the finish like with a slight kind of a chocolatey kind of flavor the balance the, the synergy of the brett and the wood and the cherry all these these three main flavor components are working together really really well mm, so you know the raspberry up front very uh kind of sweet fruity flavor underlying uh, milk chocolatey thing so you know chocolate and raspberry obviously gonna go really well together you know it's like a liquid dessert then once you kind of hit the apex you get the coffee the coffee flavor and coffee bitters i think the coffee is actually probably doing more for the bitterness here <clears throat> than the hops which isn't to say the hops are completely absent it's just that the the, the coffee is I'd probably say it's about moderate. I wouldn't say it's super strong. You know, I've had like some coffee bomb beers, like, you know, Southern Tier Java or something like that. This is a much more subtle kind of coffee thing. As far as like the oatmeal and the based out, which tends to give you like a lot of roasty things, I think it's getting a little obscured from the raspberry and um, chocolate and coffee, but that's okay. It's not completely gone. Chocolate and, and raspberry, yeah, but adding coffee to it, you wouldn't think that would work, but. It does. So the, the coffee is just kind of giving like this uh, slight kind of bitterness to it, just like a slight bonus flavor. I guess it's supposed to be, I mean, they're calling it, you know, wake and bake. So it's kind of like if you were having like, you know, something chocolate and raspberry flavored for breakfast with a side of coffee. Um, the base out really comes out like in the aftertaste, like it's a lingering dark roasty thing. So I think it's, it's the, that roastiness there is much more, you know, in my, just from my experience, it's, it's that, it's that imperial stout kind of after flavor, not really the, the coffee after flavor. And the, the raspberries there throughout almost the entire thing. I notice it, you know, I notice it up front, it kind of disappears for a moment there. And then on the finish, comes back with just like a little bit of a tartness to it. I'm really, really amazed at the balance of this beer and that they were able to pull it off. And before we get to the number one beer, let's go through the honorable mentions. Uh, Anchor Liberty Ale, Dogfish Head Liquid True Serum IPA, Funky Buddha No Crust, Hofbrau Winter Spicel, No Da Coco Loco, Oscar Blues Bourbon Barrel Age 1050, Oud Goose Boon, Prairie Americana, Samuel Adams New England IPA, Sierra Nevada Hazy Little Thing IPA, Six Point Barrel Age Righteous Ale, and our number one beer. Instead of showing you a clip of it, I'm just going to re-review it. Number one beer of 2018, Samuel Adams Utopia's 2013 vintage. Uh, I get like a huge maple syrup. I get plenty of alcohol in this. I think it's like 27% ABV. Um, you know, so a little paint thinner, but you know, very sweet. I think like if you actually had to peg this to style, I would probably put it as like English barley wine. If you ever had a JW Lee's, start with that and just like double everything. So just, you know, huge malt huge fruit you know and then they of course they age it in all kinds of barrels and they throw a bunch of maple syrup in there so you're getting huge wood vanilla maple syrup i mean it sells it smells sweet but it doesn't smell like sugary if that makes sense um and this the only well, the only reason i didn't give us a 50 is because like this bottle's kind of old and it's a little hazy but you know um i think that was the only thing that i really hit it on as far as taste hmm this beer kind of walks the line between beer and something else. I mean, I definitely could throw this under experimental beer style because, like I said, it's kind of like English barley wine recipe, but, you know, because it's like 27% ABV, they have to use like some kind of like a, it's almost like a sake yeast or it is a sake yeast, um, you know, because regular beer yeast doesn't really thrive in that, you know, high alcohol environment. But, um, yeah, so... Um, just huge malt on this, lot, like it's sugary, well not sugary, just you know sweet, like maple syrup flavor. Um, maple syrup definitely, vanilla definitely, 
all the the fruity, the dry kind of fruits, your, your plum, fig, raisin, cherry, um, and plus actual, you know, just like malt, so a little bit of milk chocolate in here, you know, really strong alcohol on this. And it's interesting because like it's not carbonated and you're supposed to drink it at room temperature like we are right now. Um, I got, a, I think there's like an ounce or two left, so maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll break that out at Christmas, but yeah. Absolutely world-class beer. I was I got so lucky to get that bottle on eBay for a song. All right, so that does it for the top 10 best beers of 2018. Um, I may do a top five worst beers list, but we'll see. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments if you want to see one. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this list. As always, I'll put links to the full video and text reviews in the description box, plus all the previous year's top 10 uh, best lists. And... Uh, that's it. So thanks for watching. And like I said, we do still have a few more uh, videos coming, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys around. Cheers. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better.